Secretary Wall, Attorney General Van Hollen, and members of the council. I'm the Reverend Kate Edwards. I'm an ordained Buddhist chaplain, and I've spent hundreds of hours ministering in Wisconsin state prisons in the last five years. I'm here to talk to you about the overuse, the misuse, and the abusive use of segregation and solitary confinement in our prisons. To put it bluntly, our tax dollars are being used to torture people in a system that is dangerous, ineffective, immoral, and very, very expensive. Allow me to repeat those words. Dangerous, ineffective, immoral, and very expensive. You may want to believe that torture doesn't go on here, that it's too strong a word, but let me assure you that it does. You may even want to assert, as you did last fall, Secretary Wall, that we don't have solitary confinement here. But let me assure you that we do, even if we call it by other administrative names. For example, 20 years ago, if two men in prison got into a fist fight, they were put into segregation for three days to cool off, and then they were let out. Now, today, in 2014, if two men in one of the maximum security prisons, for example, get into a 40-second fight, 40 seconds, people, before it's broken up by the officers, Maybe nobody's you know, particularly injured, but by the rules, we now put those people into segregation in a solitary cell for 360 days. It's well documented that the severe psychological stress of spending 23 to 24 hours a day in a stainless steel and concrete box with little to no natural sunlight for months on end, no physical contact with friends or family, no ability to hug them, to sh even shake their hands, and virtually nothing to do, leads to lasting psychological damage and does nothing towards rehabilitation. In 2012, according to a report provided by our own Department of Corrections. Um, more than 4,000 men at that time had already lived in segregation for longer than 30 days. This was 20% of the entire prison population. 118 prisoners had been kept in segregation at that point continuously for more than two years. And some men in our prisons today have been isolated from real human contact for decades, decades. The United Nations' own expert on torture has testified that no prisoner should be kept in solitary confinement for longer than 15 days, days, and then only for safety you might want to argue that this is necessary, that these people are violent and uncontrollable in any other way. But as Rick Ramish, the former head of our DOC, has testified, by placing a difficult offender in isolation, you have not solved the problem. You've only delayed it, and more likely, you have made it worse, not only for the prison, but also for the public. As all of you well know, over 95% of prisoners will eventually be released. And as Colorado Senator Jesse Ulibarri has said, don't put someone in a box for 23 hours a day and hope that things will be great when they're dropped off in our communities. As a chaplain doing pastoral visits, I have personally heard the unrelenting hours of screaming and banging coming from the segregation unit in the maximum security prison in Portage. 
I have stood alone inside one of those very tiny, completely windowless cells in Boscoville. And I know men personally who have spent literally, literally years in those cells. I've seen the anguish of men. I have sat with them in a pastoral visit. Men who hopeless and overwhelmed with despair, who have been given yet another year in solitary because they attempted suicide during the first year they were in solitary. What kind of world is this where self-harm and mental illness have become brutally punishable offenses? We have to find a better way. If you don't believe it's torture, then I'm going to ask you something. Get yourself locked into an administrative confinement cell in the Wisconsin Secure Program Facility in Boscoville. Not just for one night, as Rick Ramish did. Not just for two nights, as the Secretary of the New Mexico Department of Corrections did. But for 16 days and 16 nights straight. Then tell me that it's quiet. Then tell me that you want to be there. And then tell me whether you think you could keep your sanity if you had to be in that cell for a month, a year, 10 years, 20 years, tell me what kind of shape you would be in when you were released back out onto the streets. Also, while you are there, I'm going to ask you to think about whether this is the way to treat the mentally ill. Is this the way to treat the teenagers that we currently have in those cells? Or for that matter, is it a way to treat any living human being? Solitary confinement, as it has been practiced in this country, is coming to an end. Changes are being fought for by activists like me all around the country. Lawsuits are being won by the ACLU and others. Some states like Maine, Louisiana, New York, Colorado, they're beginning to make significant changes. A United States senator has sponsored a bill that will cut off federal funds if states don't change. The federal system itself has cut their use of segregation in half in response to pressure from the United States Senate. Wisconsin has an opportunity here, and all of you sitting here have an opportunity to make a difference in this regard. We can decide to be in the forefront of this movement rather than being dragged, ultimately kick, kicking and screaming through the courts. As Reverend Hancock, my colleague, has said, you are the people who can make a difference. You are exactly the right people. You are exactly the right person, Secretary Wall. The reforms that we're asking for, I'm going to ask you to please make them happen now. We have uh, prepared a brief that we would like to give all of you that will be handed out to you. Please don't leave before you get a copy of that. Thank you for your time. Reverend Hancock, I yes. typically I don't comment in public session, but I will tell you that I agree with very much of what you're saying. And I've also, and I've already constituted the Secretary's work group on reforming segregation in Wisconsin. And, uh, Not it just is. Wisconsin. It's being fought on many different fronts. I, Rick Ramish and I are friends. The Secretary from New Mexico and I are friends. We've discussed the findings there, and we've discussed this at a national level. And, and a lot of things can be changed. There are people that belong in segregation, and that will never change. We have some extremely violent people. But if you look outside of the United States to countries like Sweden and others that are there, where segregation is actually a very focused mental health and programming uh, facility, that's really where I think that we need to head. So I think that you will be happy with some of the changes we're making. All right, I appreciate that, Secretary, and I'll look forward to talking to you. Sounds good. Thank you.